Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines here on YouTube. Uh, I just wanted to show you this MS361 that I picked up. Um, it was disassembled. My understanding was the gentleman who I bought it off of uh, took it apart, uh, maybe tried to fix it and it didn't go so well for him. So, uh, you know, he threw it up on uh, Facebook Marketplace and said, I'm moving on. Um, and that's where I come in. So I've had a look over it here and I think I've figured out why he couldn't fix it. Let me show you what I found. So I actually had this saw almost all back together. I actually have a full length video of the repair on this saw. But when I was tightening things back up, I noticed that these two bolt holes on the engine case, so this cylinder sits in here, and then you would tighten these two bolts up they were spinning free so they're stripped and as you can see right down in there that where let's point here that does not look pretty and neither does that these two look good you can see the threads in there they're intact and then here's the real telltale this bolt see if i can get it to focus here yes so right there at the end, as you can see, is the remaining threads from inside one of those two engine case bolt holes. So this is definitely a problem. Is it the end of the world? No. That's the great thing about working on small equipment like this is that nine times out of 10, it's fixable. You just have to be willing to try. And when my friends say like, how did you learn how to do that? I basically just tell them, I don't care if I break it belongs to me. I'm not servicing it for somebody else. If I break it, I break it. But the benefit of fixing it is the learning experience and then the confidence that comes with that for fixing tools and equipment in the future. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. I bought a helicoil kit from a company here in Canada called sawparts.ca. Now there's a bunch of different places that you can buy these. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you where I got my stuff. And um, it's essentially a way to insert a new set of threads into the engine case. So you need to find the right size um, of the original bolt and the uh, thread in which you want to put in. And it's not too hard. A little bit of drilling, a little bit of tapping, insert the new threads and I think you're off to the races. So let's do it together. I'll walk you through it and uh, you know, I might screw it up. I don't know. I've done this a few times before. By no way am I a professional, but uh, again, it's worth trying, it's worth fixing, so let's do it. There really isn't a lot to it. Now this kit has 30 thread inserts, and then you have your drill bit and your tap. Now, what we're gonna do here is take the drill bit, put it on our drill, drill these holes out, take the tap, thread the tap in, and then insert the new threads. Now we have to make super careful that we don't get filings inside the engine case. So I'm going to stuff a rag in here and then at the end I'm going to vacuum and then use an air compressor to make sure that there's no thread filings that went into the bottom end of our engine. The next thing you want to do is make absolutely sure that's one of the holes that you want to repair. The last thing you want to do is start drilling out one of the good holes. So I block all the other ones from view so that I know that's the one I'm working on. So I'm lined up here, straight up and down, and let's give it a try. Oh, okay, so I gotta make sure the drill bit is tight. In the chuck. far down there. It's almost to the bottom, which is what we want. Here we go. Nice cleanly drilled hole ready to be tapped. Now this is the chance for getting the vacuum cleaner 
and the air compressor in here to make sure none of those filings fall down into the engine case. So we can now see the size difference between these two holes, one on the right and the one on the left. That's to accommodate for the new threads that we are putting in. So now it is time to tap this hole. Okay, so I have my tap here in a handle on the end of this little mini ratchet. So I've got nice access. I wanna make sure I'm going in square. The last thing you wanna do is cross thread this. And do yourself a favor, grab a lubricant. I'm gonna use WD-40 just to keep um, the friction low. And let's get, uh, let's get tapping. Okay, so let's make sure we're square. And we go. You want to let the tap do the work because you can see there's metal filings collecting there. That's the reason for those gaps. So stop, take a second, make sure you're happy with how things are square. I'm pretty happy with how this is going so far. And we're not in a race here, folks. And of course, this nice, sharp tap is making easy work. And now I'm just, I'm moving around just with my head just to make sure that I've got, I'm square here and I'm square this way. and I left a little at the bottom. So I've just bottomed out there and that's what I want. I didn't drill all the way down into the engine casing because I wanted to leave a space for this to knock on when it hits the bottom. So I've got plenty of tap in there now. This thread insert, this thread insert here only goes in about a quarter turn past the top of where the old threads were. But as the uh, tap is tapered, it goes down in there. I just wanted to make sure I had full tap thread engagement. So now I back it out. Is that ever smooth? That's nice. Then we'll make a, obviously make a concerted effort to not get any of these shavings down into the bottom end. Come on, focus you. There we go. So that's the result. Before we do the second one, we'll have to clean all that up. And then just let me show you go to left here. Nice new threads. Now those aren't the threads that we're gonna be bolting into. That's what we're going to be installing the thread insert into. So let's get this cleaned up. All right, so that was the hard part. And uh, I think that went really, really well. Oh, come on, get out of the way. There we go. As you can see, those are some good looking threads. 
So that part's done, let's get the thread insert in. So the helicoil thread insert tool is notched as the thread insert has a little tail on it here. That's what gets you your traction, so to speak, and then it's just right into the hole. Once it catches, it should go down nice and easy. Now the trick is to go about a quarter turn past where the original threads were. So we'll have a look at this one just as a reference. Obviously it has to be past flush. That looks about right right there. And the last step is then to use this kind of a punch here and just push the tail down so it can accept the new bolt. There we go. Okay, so after we've got it vacuumed out, we're gonna use some compressed air. And of course, the last step is to check your handiwork. Don't use an impact on this, please, folks, but make sure that you can go in and out with the bolts. Now, check your bolts over. Make sure that they don't have any leftover thread from the original issue. You don't want that wrecking your brand new helicoil threads. And there it is, guys. Now we have two brand new helicoil threads this is ready to go back together. So I'll link the other video down below. Um, you'll see that in the description of the full rebuild of this steel MS361 if you're interested. Um, but I would call that a great success. And uh, you know, if I have any issues with it, I'll let you know, but I'm pretty sure these are gonna hold just fine. Thanks for watching guys, take care.